Welcome back to Malaysia, Let's do it. Thanks, Peter. It's good to be back <laughs> to civilization. <laughs> How was the trip? It was excellent. Really, really good trip. Very, very uh, worthwhile. It's tough, tough trek, tough walk, but the the scenery and the environment was just, you know, outstanding. Yeah, well worth it. So let, let me just run through where we went. Um, we actually, I've got a map up here of Nepal. We flew into Kathmandu, which you can see here, and spent a day there. And then we took a small domestic flight, which was a, a major expedition in its own right, up to Lukla, which sits in this valley here, just south of the Sagarmantha National Park. And Everest is right up here on the border between uh, Nepal and Tibet. And if we go back, I think we showed this this map last time. This is the this is the airport we flew into at Lukla. It's now called the Tenzing Hillary Airport after um, Edmund Hillary, of course, and Tenzing, who were first to conquer Everest. And this 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 town here, Lukla, is the is the main starting point for all the treks <coughs> which run up the Kumbu Valley all the way up to you can see Mount Everest, the base camp sits at the bottom here. So we were we were planning to do about half of the Everest Base Camp Trail up to Tenbushe here. So let's just run through a few photographs of that. This is the this is the small domestic flight that we took from uh, Kathmandu uh, to Lukla. Um, the airport, as you'll see in a minute, is very restricted on uh, what aircraft can go in there. Small 14, 16 seaters. Uh, these are small uh, twin turboprop um, Dornier this is, I believe. So this is the flight that we took from Kathmandu and you fly into Lukla Airport, which if you actually Google that, it classifies itself as probably the most dangerous airport in the world. And understandably so, because the, the runway you can see here is actually sitting on a, you know, about 20 degree slope right on the side of the mountain. So the approach that our flight take comes up the valley here and he's got to land the plane right on the end of that runway and then reverse thrust before he basically hits the side of the mountain here. So in this airport there's no go around, there's no turn around. Once you commit to land, that's it, you've got to land. Uh, so that was quite an exciting uh, start to the journey. So, um, having survived probably the most dangerous part of the whole trip, landing at Lukla Airport, we were ready to start the seven day trek. Now Lukla is just really a very small cowboy town. Um, the only access in and out is by a uh, small plane as we landed or by helicopter. The only other option is a seven day trek into Lukla. So this is the starting point for all of the Everest Base Camp Trail trekkers and um, as they head up the valley there's you know accommodation there, there's shops you can buy, little bits of trekking gear um, and we left there uh, various shops in Lukla just to give you an idea of what it looked like. There's a little barber shop, um, little coffee shops and uh, accommodation, hotel, lodges around, uh, Momo coffee shop. Very, very simple, basic, and um, but quite nice from a photographer's standpoint of being able to capture some of these images in the small villages. However, having said that, uh, Lukla has a Starbucks. Uh, as you can see here, we were surprised to find a Starbucks. Um, however, we don't think it's an original Starbucks. If you look closely at the logo, instead of the little lady in the middle, it's got a mountain. But um, they do sell very good coffee and they had free Wi-Fi, so you can't knock that. And I was also very surprised to find a Scottish bar. Uh, so I couldn't resist taking a photograph of myself outside the Scottish bar uh, and you notice from the, the menu here they're serving up some local delicacies such as Everest burgers and yak steaks. <laughs> Locals uh, sitting around playing, there was, this was quite a popular board game, there was a number of board games we saw the locals playing and um, little kids running around the streets I'm sure this little girl looks as though she was related to Bob Marley, not sure. So we, we left Lukla for the start of the trek. This is a, a scene looking back down the valley. It's a very rural 
situation, you got a lot of agriculture going on and the start of the walk from Lukla up here down the trail here is relatively easy. We actually dropped about 200 metres on that first trek in the afternoon after arriving. Um, just another scene of the, this is the trail, uh, it's, it's pretty rough, rocks, but um, in many of the steeper bits they actually cut steps as you'll see later. But already we're starting to see some magnificent scenery of the mountains here. We're at a height of about 2,800 metres here, dropping down to, on the first day, 2,600 metres to uh, Packden where we stayed for the first night. Now, all along the way, um, the only way of getting goods up and down that trail are, are by porters, or by donkeys, or yaks, as we'll see. And this is a common sight on the trail. We'd see local men and women, ladies, taking very large packs, uh, usually up the trail um, towards Namchi Bazaar and even beyond. Uh, as we went further up, the scenery just got better. We went through small villages. Here we can see another fairly rural scene. A lot of uh, agriculture. They grow vegetables here, cabbages, potatoes, rice being grown on any uh, particular uh, flat bit of ground. And all along the way we can see little temples and shrines um, and inscriptions on the rocks um, as we move our way up. These inscriptions are known as Mani stones, it's um, uh, Nepalese or Tibetan script that's written on that and you'll see that all the way up the trail as we go up and apparently it's customary to pass these Mani stones on the left hand side uh, much the same way as you spin the prayer wheels on the way up. We could see many of the prayer wheels which you spin um, as you move up the trail, very very common sight. Further up, um, we started to follow the Dud Kozi River up the Kumbu Valley. And you can see here this uh, beautiful scenery. We can see a bridge crossing here. We did many, many bridge crossings. Uh, and as I said before, all of the goods that were taken up the trail were either by porter, uh, by yaks, or uh, this animal is not actually a yak. This is actually known as a dzo, D-Z-O. It's actually a cross between a yak and uh, domestic cattle. So these were very common on the trail and you have to be relatively careful um, with these animals because they had no problem in just pushing you off the track and down the steep side. So it was always good or wise to stay on the inside of the track when these, these guys were passing you. But you usually, you could hear them coming. You can see they all have little yak bells around their neck. So it's uh, fairly easy to see them or hear them coming. Uh, we also got a lot of donkeys, here's a train of donkeys making a steep descent and over a bridge, another small river crossing here, so we saw a lot of these on the, on the trail on this occasion they're taking gas up the trail to some of the villages. Um, this is actually Monjo, Monjo we stayed overnight um, and it had a small monastery on the hill uh, and some of these larger villages we had, you could see small monasteries. Um, the largest one was actually Tengboshe Monastery, which is the, the last uh, place that we stayed further up the mountain, which we'll see later. Now, as we left Monjo going further up, we followed very closely the Dud Kozi River. You can see the lovely blue aquamining colour of the water. Uh, this colour really comes from all the minerals that are washed down from the mountains, but it makes it very, very beautiful. Rough track here, and again, you can see a porter making his way slowly up the trail and likewise here as we follow the river up this rough stony track on the way up. We had to make many of these bridge crossings uh, over the rivers and um, luckily now the bridges are made of uh, steel or aluminium so they're very very strong, they feel fairly sturdy but um, you'll get anything from donkeys, yaks, zo and trekkers making their way across these fairly long, sometimes fairly high suspension bridges. Here we see a view, this is an old bridge here, which obviously used to be a wooden bridge, which is disintegrating, just leaving the, the suspension wires across it. A good view of the, the river there going back down the valley. This is probably one of the highest bridges we crossed. This is the last one before we made the, the steep ascent to Namchi Bazaar. Um, quite a spectacular crossing that. You can see this bridge here is 
festooned with prayer flags. The Nepalese, uh, like the Tibetans, like to put prayer flags uh, in various locations. And then the trail started to become extremely steep. There was a very steep rise here up to Namchi Bazaar. You can see the step stone trail here, but we get some magnificent views of the mountains here. We had a very, very clear day here. And at last we got our first fleeting glimpse of Mount Everest. Uh, there was a small gap through the trees on this rise and we managed to see in the distance, here we see Mount Everest, right at the top of the valley. And um, as we move further up on the next day or two, we actually got a lot closer to Mount Everest. There were many, many tea houses on the way up uh, on the trail, so it was very common for us to stop and drink some tea. Yak milk tea was very popular. Ginger tea, freshly ground ginger, very refreshing. And um, usually because of the altitude and the exertion that we were having to put out on these steep ascents, it was, um, it was a very welcome break to sit down for five or ten minutes in these uh, small tea houses. This is the last section running up to Namchi Bazaar. We're rising up to about 3,600 metres now. Um, you can see how steep the terrain here is, but we've got some magnificent views, views of the mountains on the south side here. And um, as we reach the top, it gets even better. This is uh, Namchi Bazaar, so it's about 3,600 metres or thereabout. We stopped here overnight. This is very commonly used for, by trekkers going to Everest Base Camp. They usually stop here for two nights to give them a chance to acclimatise to the altitude. We stopped here one night because we weren't going as far as Everest Base Camp and um, moved on the next day. But a very spectacular uh, setting here with the small town. There's a small square here. They have a market every morning. And we were lucky to stay in a relatively nice lodging or a hotel here with hot water and in fact we had the luxury of a, an electric blanket that one night. Uh, however, some of the other lodges were, were, were not nearly as good as that. We didn't have hot water and um, in many cases very limited power. So the next day, beautiful day, the trek moved further up the Kumbu Valley, heading all the way up here to the, the, towards Everest. You can see Everest right in the middle here, stunning scenery as we moved up and got closer. And the trail, once we ra rose up a bit from Nanji Bazaar, it was relatively flat up the valley, so it gave us a great opportunity to take some photographs of these magnificent uh, Himalayan mountains here with Everest here right in the middle. You can see here this, this small hill in the foreground here. This is where we were heading. At the top of this is Nanji Bazaar. So in fact, we had to drop down this valley all the way down to the bottom. So all that altitude we'd gained, we basically dropped down, which was uh, a little bit disappointing. Had lunch at the bottom there, crossed the river, and then we had a extremely steep climb up this hill to Namchi Bazaar, which sits at uh, 3,800, 3,900 meters. But then that gave us a beautiful view up the last section towards Everest. Just another view up the valley, you get some of these Buddhist stupas uh, along the trail. Um, but again, magnificent views of the mountains here, Nupsi, Lutsi, uh, Mount Everest, uh, all the way up there, stunning. And eventually we reached Namchi Bazaar, this sits about 3,900 meters up on this small flat plain on top of the hill. There's nothing much here, there's significant um, structure here is really the, the Buddhist monastery. It's a world heritage site. We visited that and uh, it was very timely. We visited the monastery and there was a, a ceremony going on with all the monks chanting. So it was, a, it was a very atmospheric. Extremely cold up here. This shot was taken about 6.30 a.m. or 7 a.m. in the morning. It was about minus 11 during the night. The temperature started rising here. This is a little overview of the town here. And then, of course, we've got really stunning views of Everest in the early morning light here. And here we see the entrance to the, the monastery at, Nam, at, uh, at Tengboshe with Everest in the background. There's nothing much there. There's a couple of lodges. Uh, there is a bakery, which is apparently the highest bakery in the world. Uh, but uh, you, 
very nice location to sit there and have a cup of tea and maybe have some cake and look at the magnificent view of uh, Everest in the background. This is actually the lodge that we stayed with, a, with another mountain behind it. You can see how cold it is there. Uh, snow in the mountains, very, very bare, icy here when we got up in the morning. Uh, so quite a tough location. <clears throat> another view later in the morning looking back down the valley. This is the trail as it leaves uh, Tengboshe. The trail actually goes further up this valley to Dengboshe and then on and further up and eventually you reach uh, Everest back base camp. That's another three day trek. Um, we turned around at this point and headed back down and made the three day trek all the way back down. Another view, this is um, a lovely view of some yaks coming through Tengboshe with Everest in the background. You can see they're all empty, obviously heading back down the hill to load up again and then head back up the hill. This is a shot of me, this is uh, early in the morning, uh, taking some shots of Everest. This was taken by a colleague and shows me with my local Nepalese hat, which it may look rather funny, but trust me, it kept me warm. I wasn't bothered about how I looked. <laughs> So that's really a brief summary of the, the trip to Nepal. Very, very rewarding. Uh, tough walk. I mean, physically you need to be um, a little bit in training to do that. Um, very, very cold in the evening. And very important when you're, uh, you know, carrying your camera equipment to keep your pack as small and as light as possible. So that's it. Mm -hmm.